Good to see you here this evening. And it's, I think it was kind of snowing out there a little bit. Let's all stand together tonight. Turn to page number seven in our hymn books. Oh, yeah. Blessed be the name, page number seven. All praise to him who reigns above in majesty supreme, who gave himself for men to die that men might him receive. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. On the second, his name above all names shall stand, exalted more and more. Who can the Father's own right hand, where angels host adore? Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's sing this last. His name shall be the Counselor, the mighty Prince of Peace of all earth kingdoms conquers whose reign shall never cease blessed be the name blessed be the name blessed be the name of the lord blessed be the name blessed be the name blessed be the name of the lord pastor Good to be back. Good to see everyone again. Uh, we missed y'all. We were glad to get away on vacation for just a little while. And I had a good Christmas. I hope you did as well. And uh, we're glad to be back. We're going to have a little bit of a different service tonight. We're going to change things up. Um, those of you joining us on Facebook, great to have you. And uh, we're going to change things up just a little bit tonight. We'll do a little bit reflection on the year. And uh, at the end, we will have our communion, and then we will have our uh, candlelight time. And uh, looking forward to that. If you haven't been a part of that, we do things a little different than some churches, but it's going to be a good time. So let's have a word of prayer, and let's begin the service this evening. Heavenly Father, God, we come before you. Lord, you are so great. You've done so many great things. God, we pray for those who are struggling and hurting tonight. Lord, we thank you that you are on the throne. And you are the great physician. And Lord, we do pray for healing and comfort and uh, Lord, wisdom and strength in whatever area is needed. God, tonight, I pray you be glorified as we uh, take prayer requests and as we, uh, Lord, read and uh, teach your word. And God, as we take up communion and reflect on what you did on the cross. And then, Lord, as we finish it up, Lord, reflecting on what you've done for each of us individually, uh, Lord, tonight, I pray that you would be pleased and I pray that... Uh, you would uh, be praised tonight, and it's in Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. You may be seated. If um, someone was asking me how our trip was, let me just give you a little bit of how the trip went. And those of you who taught Riley, joy to the world, um, we're going to have a talk after church. So this is how our trip went. In the back seat of the car, for we only traveled about... I don't know, five hours one day, four hours, and some the next day. But for most of the car, you put Joy to the World, the first verse, or no, not Joy to the World, Jingle Bells. Jingle Bells, the first verse, and then when you get to the end, hey, and then you put that on repeat about 800 billion times. That was our trip with Riley scream, or uh, Lukey screaming <laughs> every little bit too. So thank you for those teaching. Can we teach another verse to Jingle Bells too? <laughs> Next year, let's work on a second one. Oh, my goodness. Riley, you did good, didn't you, though? We had fun, but I, we banned Jingle Bells for the next few days in our house. But anyway, um, we are going to read our prayer letter um, tonight from, the, uh, from our family in Romania that we support. Um, 
looking uh, forward to hearing from them uh, here tonight. So let's read this. Um, tonight, the uh, I'm going to mispronounce their name, but Mercia and Ronella Christian from Romania. Our hearts are so full of joy and warmed up th by this truth. The things might change around us and the devil might try to bring worry and fear, but our anchor in the midst of stormy sea of life is the eternal truth that God sent his son to be born in a manger. Lived on earth, died for our sins, once for all he was risen from death, he is alive, and this fact will never change and gives us confidence and strength. We are happy to tell you that the work in prisons, you remember this is the family in Romania that does all that work in different prisons throughout Romania. They do discipleship and they see people saved uh, quite often. It is true that it is very much different than any, everything we were used to in the work, and this is a constant struggle, but we are grateful that God is giving us wisdom and open doors. The Bible study program is working so well the testimonies we received for our students bring a lot of joy and they motivate us to press on. Here is one testimony. When, this is from a, an inmate in one of the prisons. When we are suffering, we should look to Jesus because he suffered so much in all his earthly life and then on the cross. We need to trust that God will bring us to light from the deep of our sorrow. For me, reading from Bible to my roommates is amazing. God make possible to them to start believing in him and so the light of the gospel to go from one to another. I know that Jesus' desire is for all people to open their hearts for him. This is from an inmate who got saved. That was his plea and his prayer in the prison. And I find that wonderful. Uh, unfortunately, the town is locked down because of the virus in Romania, but they're able to work online and they're able to send um, their uh, discipleship courses into the prison. So the gospel is getting into many, many different prisons throughout Romania. And uh, there's more to this letter. Um, their family is doing well. They're praying for safety for their parents, their children, and grandchildren, and, uh, and the different people here. So I'll let you read the rest of that. We'll put it up there a little later on. But what we're going to do now is we're going to sing one more hymn. And then we're going to take prayer requests, and then we'll uh, do things just a little different tonight. So, Brother Brian, would you lead us in another song, please? Let's turn to page number 206 this evening. 206, Songs He Leadeth Me. He leadeth me, O blessed thought, O words with heavenly comfort fraught. Whate'er I do, where'er I be, still is God's hand that leadeth me. He leadeth me, He leadeth me, by his own hand he leadeth me. His faithful follower I would be, for by his hand he leadeth me. On the second verse, sometimes mid scenes of deepest gloom, sometimes where Eden's bowers bloom. By water still or troubled sea, since till his hand that leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me, for by his hand he leadeth me. His faithful follower I would be, for by his hand he leadeth me on the last. And when my task on earth is done, when by thy grace the victory's won, in death's wait I will not flee, since God through Jordan lead me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me, by his own hand he leadeth me. We are his 
faithful follower I would be, for by his hand he leadeth me. Good. Wonderful. Now I was told um, a good friend who's been here before and presented, uh, Lloyd, uh, he's a translator, a missionary. Um, he was watching tonight, so good friend of mine, and we praise the Lord for his ministry, getting ready to leave the states as soon as uh, the restrictions lift a little bit. So uh, I'm glad he's watching. I've been a good friend uh, to me and my family. All right, take your prayer list tonight. Eric, good to see you. I didn't see you walk in. Good to see you tonight. All right. I hope you all had a good Christmas. Everything, nobody uh, overcooked the turkey or anything. No one, everybody had a good dinner. Good, good, good. All right, good. All right, what are we praying for this evening? What's on your, what's on your heart tonight? Everybody's healthy? Let's pray for uh, Houston and Connie. Um, be in prayer for them. Also pray for Dallas and Barbara. They're not feeling too well tonight. Yes, ma'am? They did? Good. Okay. Uh, little William, I think three years old, four years old, um, he fell down some stairs and uh, they had to take out a chunk of his head and sounds like they put that back and young little fella. So be in prayer for him and his family, little William. Um, yes. Yes, John's not been feeling well. Pray that the doctors can uh, figure this out. I think you have something tomorrow. Or was that today? Monday. It's this coming Monday? Okay. Be in prayer for John. Um, yes. Be in prayer for Candace. Just be in prayer for my family. We're a mess. What in the world? Okay, pray for Josh Brown. Um, not feeling well tonight. Um, Candace has an appointment tomorrow. Um, Lord willing, they'll find out what's going on. Um, be in prayer for them. Anyone else tonight need to add to the list? Yes, pray for our country. All right, anything else? All right. Yes, how many of you have unspoken prayer requests? One, two, Twenty-one unspoken. Okay, my goodness, a lot of a lot of things to pray for. All right, anything else? Yes, yes. Stony not feeling well tonight. Okay, I think that's all that I have right now. I know there's a prayer requests come over the prayer chain. Um, if you'd like to be a part of that, I talk to Miss Connie, and she will get you on that prayer chain. Also, yes, ma'am. Um, he's doing well. He's doing well. Brother Harold, he's probably watching tonight, but as far as I know, he's, everything's going well with his health, and um, they're just staying in um, right now. So, but as far as things are going well and smooth, uh, last I heard. So we'll continue to pray for you, Brother Harold. Of course, continue to pray for Miss Betty King. Brother Walt is really struggling, um, really struggling, Walt King, so be in prayer for him. All right, is that it? All right. Uh, we're not going to take up an offering tonight, Brother Ray, um, but you still get the count. If anyone has something they want to give, just at the end of the service, put it in. Uh, the offering plate we'll have in the back. All right, take your Bibles. Take your Bibles. A time of reflection. I'm thinking about it. I've had a lot of time... Uh, over these past few days, uh, my, uh, my in-laws have a back porch, and there's some woods behind, and I really enjoyed uh, some time out there, and 
walking around. They've got a little little tiny dog uh, walking around and uh, time to think. And um, just uh, as I, I decided I was going to read through um, some books of the Bible, and I read through First Chronicles. And that's where we're going to be tonight, First Chronicles. If you get to Psalms, you've gone too far, go back just a few books. First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles. Chapter 5. 1 Chronicles chapter 5. We're going to look at this. Um, these past few months, the last half of the year, much of the Wednesday nights we use to talk about prayer. And then it's kind of these last few Wednesdays, we've tried to be more encouraging, more of a help. Um, and that's kind of be, going to be tonight. I'm looking forward to starting on Sunday nights, a series starting in January. And then on Wednesday nights, we have a series we're going to be starting. And then on Sunday mornings, we're going to be taking uh, maybe some common questions that uh, might be asked and answering them through the Word of God. Um, so I'm looking forward to this next year. I will be announcing the theme for the year on the 10th and uh, how we're going to help people, how we're going to reach our community this year. We're going to do some things we've never done before. One thing I want everyone to take part of in one fast or another. I want everyone who comes to this church, well, I'd like everyone all over, who, even who doesn't come, but those who especially come to this church, I want everyone this next year to read their Bible every single day. So I've tried to do some things to help with that. There are some Bible reading programs on the back table. If you want to read through the Bible just straight through Genesis to Revelation, there's a program for that on how to divide that up every day. Uh, there's a program if you want to do more themes. So you want to read uh, a couple chapters in the law, a couple chapters of uh, poetry, a couple chapters of, of the Gospels, there's a plan for that. There's, if you want to, I'm going to do this. If you want to read through the Bible in 90 days, um, there's a lot of chapters, but uh, there's a plan back there for that. I want everyone to have a plan on how you're going to get into God's Word this year. Say, Pastor, I'm not a good reader. You, the, the goal is not how much you read. That's not the point. The goal is to get you into God's Word every day with me, Okay. Um, so if you'd like to avail yourself on that back table, there's papers back there. Get a plan, get organized, get a notebook, and to read God's Word every day. And um, looking forward to that. First Chronicles chapter 5. If you're awake tonight, say amen. If you're half asleep, say amen too. All right, there we go. All right, First Chronicles chapter 5. Let's look at verse 1 and 2. I'm not going to be long tonight, but I do want to give you some thoughts verse 1 and 2, and then we're going to jump down later in the chapter. Now the sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, for he was the firstborn, but for as much as he defiled his father's bed, his birthright was given unto the sons of Joseph, the son of Israel, and the genealogy is not to be reckoned after the birthright. Notice verse 2. For Judah prevailed above his brethren, and of him came the chief ruler, but the birthright was Joseph's. Who do we know that was prominent that came from the line of Judah? Jesus. Actually, David would come first, and then the kings of Jerusalem would come after that. Now, Saul was not of the line of uh, Judah. There, there's reasons for that. Uh, some people believe that was because that was more of a punishment. Uh, allowing the, for their disobedience. But David would come on the scenes, and then from the line of David would come the Messiah, Jesus. I find it fascinating. I know sometimes the Chronicles are hard to read some of it because there's a lot of names, but you're going to see tonight those names have meanings and reasons. So we look here, we find Reuben was the firstborn. So you had Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, right? After Joseph, Joseph was not the firstborn, correct? Everybody with me? Joseph was not, who was the firstborn of Jacob? Reuben was. So Reuben should have had the birthright, but Reuben did something very wicked, and uh, he defiled his father's bed. He had uh, an affair with his father's concubine, and a very wicked deed. The birthright was taken from him, and it was given to Joseph. 
Joseph had two sons. What names were they? Ephraim, Manasseh, right? And God would bless them in a certain way. But why did God choose Judah? I don't know. <laughs> there's some reasons. There's some thoughts behind it. We're going to look into that tonight. So jump down to verse, um, verse 18. We're going to read a few verses here. I want to point out a particular phrase down in here. Okay, the sons of Reuben and the Gadites and half the tribe of Manasseh, a valiant men, men able to bear buckler and sword and to shoot with bow and skillful in war, were four and forty-four thousand seven hundred and three score that went out to war. And they made war with the Hagarites, with Letter and Nephish and Nodab, and they were helped against them, and the Hagarites were delivered into their hand, and all that were with them, for they did what? Cried to who? In the battle, and he was entreated of them because they put their trust in him. Notice this next verse. They took away all of their cattle and of their camels 50,000, of the sheep 250,000, of the asses 2,000, and of men and 100,000 prisoners. For there fell down many slain because the war was of the war was of God. In other words, God allowed the war. God stirred Israel up to go into war. God was around during the war. The war was prompted by God. Why? Possibly to punish. Possibly, at the very least, it was allowed by God. This discouraging idea of warfare. None of us like to hear of war, right? We don't like to hear, you know, the country's going to war, the country's at war. We don't want to hear those words. And yet this would have been a discouraging time, and yet we read that God allowed this to take place. There was a group, now we don't have time to turn to all of these, um, but in Joshua, before Joshua and the children of Israel, listen up, Riley, listen up, Shh, quiet down please, don't talk. Before the children of Israel went past the Jordan River to conquer Israel, two and a half tribes stayed behind. Those two and a half tribes we just read about, Reuben, the Gadites, and it would have been half the tribe of Manasseh, they stayed on the other side of Jordan. You can find that in the book of, I believe the book of Numbers, you can find the story. That's the group we're talking about. Some people called the Hagarites, they come down and they fight with those two and a half tribes. Now, notice what takes place. The chapter begins with Reuben losing his birthright for committing a very wicked sin. Listen closely. Sin is costly. Every single time, sin is costly. Every single time, sin costs you something. We're going to talk about that in one month. We're going to deal with what sin costs you. And in many cases, in every case, sin will always cost you more than you expected. Even what we call the little sin. This is why it's so important to train yourself and be very careful in these areas. Now, the blessing of the birthright would go to Joseph, the firstborn of Jacob's second wife. Remember, there was Leah, and basically, for lack of a better term, the Bible does not call her beautiful. Rachel was beautiful. Leah was not. Leah, Jacob was tricked, and he married Leah. And Excuse me, Jacob was tricked, and he married Leah, and then he would get Rachel. Who was the firstborn of Rachel? Joseph. There's a lot of genealogy here. We're not going to get into all of that tonight. God would bless Ephraim and Manasseh and uh, give them a large portion of land in Israel. And God would do some very great things here. But the events take place at a time we're not sure. It seems like the time of Saul. You remember Saul, the first king of Israel? It seems like this event took place during the time of Saul, but nobody's 100% certain. So let's notice just a few things tonight. And uh, let's try to be, jump into God's word here. Notice God's hand of blessing. Notice God's hand of blessing. Amidst the trials and the pains of this world, God was going to bless his people. God had a birthright. God had a plan. Even to this day, if for no other reason to believe the Bible, look at how God has preserved Israel. God had a plan all along. You see, that brings so much confidence to me that I hold the very Word of God in my hands. If for nothing else, than for what God's done for Israel. And there are many hundreds of thousands of other things in the Word to prove it. 
But we see here that God had a plan. Notice God's hand of blessing. Sometimes, listen closely, we need to step back and look at the bigger picture. It is very easy to become consumed with what you have going on. Listen, in this story we find a battle that was about to rage. And we find from the passage of Scripture, they only had a little over 44,000. We don't know how many the enemy had, but it said they took over 100,000 prisoners. So this enemy was daunting. Listen tonight, this is what I want you to do. Step back and look at the bigger picture. We get too caught up with what's going on, America and uh, the downfall and the problems and you know the, the, the mark of the beast and God's return and that's all stuff we need to look at. But sometimes we consume everything we think we know around America. Be careful about that. God's centralized location happens to be around Israel, a place called Jerusalem. I'm not saying we can't talk about it, but I'm saying you need to step back and get a bigger picture of what's going on. Don't become consumed with your problems that you don't step back and look at what God really has going on in this world today. What is God trying to achieve? What is God going to do? Sometimes we need a bigger view of the big picture. Too often we become consumed with our problems. Listen. God had promised Abraham a mighty people. God had promised Isaac the covenant would go through Isaac. The covenant would go through Jacob. And there would be this place called Israel. There's a bigger picture at play. We need to step back. I refuse to live in bitterness towards people. I refuse to allow myself to be complacent in my lifestyle. I refuse to allow myself to just sit around and be grumpy. I refuse, and yet it is so easy to fall into these very situations. Sometimes we've got to step back and say, God, what are you, you doing here? God, I don't understand it. I don't get it. I don't know why. You know what? 2020 has been a big year. <laughs> it's been a big, crazy year. And yet I think it's important, especially as we go into 2021, we step back and say, God, you got us through. Man, it's been a weird year. God, it seems just up and down and up and down. And, you know, you, you start coughing and all of a sudden you're like, oh, no, do I have the virus? And then it's down. Oh, my goodness. Then it's up and then it's down. It's just been a year that's been incredible. You got to step back. Take a deep breath. Say, God, what are you doing? God, what are you doing through me from 2020? It's, 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 it's interesting to look around and to say, well, that person's doing it wrong and that person's doing it wrong. What if God is just teaching us faith, how to have faith, how to trust Him more? We need to step back and see a bigger picture because in verse 1, God had a plan. Reuben sin, he stepped out of the birthright. God would give the birthright to Joseph. And then God said that Judah would be blessed. Judah was the least of the tribes. And yet God was going to use him to bring the Messiah. Sometimes we can get too caught up in what's going on and not step back and see what God is doing. Uh, this year, starting on Wednesday nights and starting in January, we're going to start in Genesis. We're going to go from the beginning of Genesis to the end of Genesis. And we're going to look at the reason God has done some things. We're just going to study it. We're going to go in depth into it. And we're going to figure out, because if you don't understand where we came from, you're not going to understand where we're going. It's very important that we understand what's going on there. And I'm looking forward to jumping into that and really diving deep into the book of Genesis this coming year. God's hand of blessing has been upon us. Tonight, number one, I want you to step back and notice God's hand of blessing in your life. Number two, I want you to see, I want you to look down in verse 20. We have this battle that's going to be raging we have, we see, they couldn't see all of this, but we see that God had a bigger plan taking place in the first couple verses. Now let's jump into actual real-time warfare going on. Real struggles. Verse 19, they made war with the Hagarites. Notice verse 20. And they were helped against them. They were delivered, the Hagarites, into their hand, and all that were with them Everyone who was a part of it, 
for they cried to God in the battle. I want you to notice, number one, God's hand of blessing, the bigger picture. It's more than just what you and I, uh, you know, sometimes we dwell on these little things and there's a bigger work at play here. Notice God's hand. Notice the bigger picture. Number two, notice God's hand of protection. Notice God's hand of protection. The Bible teaches He helped them. He delivered them. This is what we desire so much from God. God, we need Your help right now. I don't know how many times this year, you know, I'll just lay in bed at night and just say, God, help me. God, help me. We crave that. We long for that. God, just help me. I don't know what I'm doing. God, just help me. And sometimes it's more just talking. It's really not praying. You know, I'm really not seeking God's face. I'm just throwing words up. But my goodness, sometimes I get so desperate and just say, God, you've got to help me. Because the situation is unbearable. It's unpredictable. You know, we, we, we can't imagine what's coming up in 2021. We don't know. After a year like this, who knows? God, help me. He delivers them. I love this. God wants to hear you cry to Him. He longs for you to cry out and need His help. Notice He hears them. We long to see God hear us in our despair. And this is what God wants for you to do. Cry out to Him in the battle. Cry out to Him. Um, he, not that God has an ego, but God wants to prove Himself to you. God wants your faith to be built. God wants you to grow in your faith in Him. They cry out. He is there to help as our Abba Father. He is there. We need to do a little more crying out. Notice God's hand of protection. Listen, He desires your complete submission to His power and authority over the crisis you face. Whatever that may be, I pray to the one with authority. Daniel prayed that God to the God who had absolute control. Elijah prayed to the God who had absolute control. Um, earlier on in, in the book here, there's a man by the name of Jabez, and you've heard of his prayer. Jabez prayed to the God who had complete control. The woman in uh, the Gospels who uh, touched Christ for, de for de uh, deliverance from her disease, she had faith in the one that had complete control. The man who was blind, he had faith in the one who had complete control. The man who they let down uh, through the roof and they brought to Jesus, he had faith that he was the one with complete control. Control over disease, control over pain. Notice God's hand of protection. Yes, they had an, only an army of 44,000. And some of you are sitting there saying, well, why do they need God with 44,000? They were up against a formidable opponent. I don't know exactly how many they were up against, but much more than what they had. They were up against an enemy that they could not beat on their own. There were still problems probably in the army. There were still issues with 44,000 different people. I'm sure there were problems. And yet, notice God's hand of protection. I also want you to notice their bravery. Notice their bravery. They faced an opponent much stronger than they. Their need was large. Their fears were even bigger. But their God heard them when facing a seemingly unbeatable opponent. Maybe they remembered when Israel, you remember when Joshua came into the promised land, they defeated Jericho. And then what did they do? They let their guard down. They went to this little tiny city called Ai. And they were defeated at Ai. Why? They let their guard down. My friend, there's many Christians who we let our guard down. We see something happen great in our lives. And then all of a sudden we say, okay, well, I take it easy now. Woo, got through that one. God helped me do that one. Now I'm just going to, you know, relax. Take it easy for a little bit. I don't want to do too much. No, no, no. There should be bravery. There should be a passion in what we do. God would hear and remember his people. It is time that we have a little courage to go into the battle. I want to read this story. I read this, and this really uh, uh, touched my heart. David, a two-year-old boy with leukemia, was taken by his mother, Deborah, to Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston to see Dr. John Truman, who specialized in treating children with cancer and various blood diseases. 
Dr. Truman's prognosis was devastating. He told the two-year-old boy uh, that he told his mom uh, that he had a 50-50 chance that he would survive a two-year-old boy with leukemia. The countless clinic visits, the blood tests, the, the drugs, the fear and pain, uh, the mother's ordeal can almost be as bad as the child's because she must stand by, unable to bear the pain herself. David, this two-year-old, never cried in the emergency room, never cried when the, they would stick the needles in him. He would hustle ahead of his mother with a smile, sure of the welcome he would always get. When David turned three, David had to have a spinal tap, a painful procedure at any age. It was explained to him that because he was sick, Dr. Truman had to do something to make it better. The mama told the boy, if it hurts, remember it's because he loves you. The procedure was horrendous. It took three nurses to hold this David, three years old, down so they could do the procedure and hold him still. While he yelled and sobbed and struggled and his mom stood there frantically having to watch her child endure all of this, when it was done, the tiny boy, soaked in sweat and tears, looked up at the doctor and grasped, thank you, Dr. Tuman, for my hurting. He understood he would have to endure pain, but the man who was allowing the pain did it because he cared for him. Dr. Tuman, thank you for my hurting. It's interesting that there's, there's not enough bravery when we're going through the fight. This world is a fight. This world is painful. This world is harsh. The devil does not fight fair. And there's a lot of pain going on. There's a lot of heartache going on. There needs to be some bravery in us Christians. There must be some looking up to God and saying, God, it's okay for these problems. God, I'm okay with whatever I must endure. God, I know that you allow it. That you're with me through it. Notice their bravery. And lastly, I want you to notice the course of action. The course of action. Lastly, the course of action. Verse 22. For there fell down many slain because the war was of God. He allowed it. And they dwelt in their steads until the captivity. I want you to see their course of action. God designed the situation. The war was of God. They went through it. But then I want you to see that their dependence would have been on the promises. Take your Bible real quick. Go to the book of Deuteronomy. The book of Deuteronomy real quick. Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, Leviticus, or excuse me, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Oh boy, it must have been a long week. Deuteronomy chapter 20. Notice God's desi design of the situation, but then notice man's dependence upon the promise. Deuteronomy chapter 20. When thou goest out to battle against thine enemies and seest horses and chariots and a people more than thou, be not afraid of them, for the Lord thy God is with thee, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And it shall be when ye are come nigh unto the battle that the priest shall approach and speak unto the people and shall say unto them, Hear, O Israel, ye approach this day unto the battle against your enemies, let not your heart faint. Fear not, do not tremble, neither be ye terrified because of them. For the Lord your God is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. They would have depended on the promises that they were given. You say, Pastor, Deuteronomy wasn't written to me. You're right. It was not written to you, but it was written for you. Okay, look in, uh, don't turn there, but in Romans 8, 28, you know the verse. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. My friend, tonight, their course of action was understanding God designed the situation. The war was of God. The battle plan was given by him. They, all they had to do was follow the rule book, and God would take care of the rest. Same thing for us today. Same exact thing. The rule book, now we have a little bigger. They didn't have everything we have. We have a rule book. The battle plan is already set. God's designed it. God understands it. God knows what's going to take place tomorrow. 
All you and I have to do is follow the battle plan. Why? Because it's of God. It's of God. He understands it. He gets it. He knows what we're going through. Now, they've done something right. And I meant to, we're going to get into this, but we don't have time tonight. In verse 25, something takes place. They transgressed against the God of their fathers and went a whoring after the gods of the people of the land whom God destroyed before them. God went through and took care of business, and yet the people that were following God at one time, years later, years later down the road, they started to follow and drift away from God's plan in the rule book. And then you know what happened to them? They were taken into captivity. You understand the war is of God. God allows it. God understands it. God knows it. God gets it. All we have to do is follow the rule book. And I don't get that. That's hard. That's tough. But that's what I must do. Now, understand this. You say, Pastor, I've done good. I followed the rule book. I've done really well. Stay close to God. Pay close attention because you're going to be tempted very slowly to pull away, to turn away, to transgress against the Lord. Just because you do right once, listen closely, does not give you a pass to do wrong later. Be ever so careful. This year we're going to look into this. How can we be on guard? Because all of us are prone to wander. You know that song, prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. We're prone to turn away. I don't think Israel, I don't think just one day they said, all right, God, forget you. We're going this way. I think it was gradually allowing the people to show them their gods, to show them how they were living, until eventually Israel started going slowly away, slowly away, slowly away, slowly away, slowly away, until eventually they were worshiping the gods of these other groups of people instead of Almighty God. And my friend, it's very easy, not in the same way, not the same thing, we don't worship necessarily a statue, but it's very easy to slowly look at what this they have to offer. Slowly go away. I was reading a book, and I'll be through. I was reading a book on um, end times prophecy, and uh, really enjoying the book. Actually, I listened to it on my Kindle, and uh, listened to it. But he was talking about certain events that have taken place over the years, and ever since the generation where they had, and I forget what year, and I forget what who was against who in court. But ever since they took the Bible and prayer out of school, he was pointing at certain things that have happened and taking place. And now we're quite a ways away from that. And we're quite a ways away from the Lord as a whole. You see, America, it's taken a slow approach. Away, away, away. It used to be, from what I read and what I look at, you know, and what I see, years ago, people at least had respect for who God was. Today, Atheism is rising. Now, polytheism is rising. Uh, you know, monotheism is... Uh, the, these different isms, if you will, are rising, this wickedness. My friend, be careful. The war is of God. But all he asked, he said he was entreated of them. He found favor of them because they put their trust in him. I love this passage of Scripture. And tonight as we reflect, we take these few moments here and we reflect on the communion time. And we reflect on the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then as we have our time of praise and we reflect on what God's done, I want you to remember, 2020 was of God. It was allowed. It's tough. But what's he want you and me to do? Trust. Absolute, complete dependence upon him. Amen. All right. If you would, those of you who are joining us on Facebook, we're going to uh, shut this off. Um, we're going to have our communion time, and we appreciate you joining us. We love you. If you do have prayer requests, please put them on the Facebook account, and uh, we will definitely put them to our prayer list. God bless you. Have a happy new year. Thank you for joining us. All right, take your Bibles and go to the book of 1 Corinthians.